So thank you all for coming. Um, and you're here for channeling. So I'm sure you all know what that is. If you don't, feel free to let me know. I, I like to just have an open forum here to not only share what I have as far as gifts and what my journey has been to find those gifts, but I'm also interested to hear, you know, what you have to share, if, if anything, and if there's any channels in the room, there's any experiences that you're having. It helps all of us to, to understand better, you know, where we're at and how things are changing because we're in very transitional times right now. And so many of us are bringing these gifts to the surface. And that is exactly what happened to me. So I always like to start out um, by sharing my story because I feel like it's very important right now. And I was told that it was something that I was meant to share here in the world. And then we'll talk a little bit more about what's happening on the planet right now, um, which is something that I channel a lot about as a part of my mission here. And then I'm actually going to do a live channeling portion of the class probably for about an hour, hour and a half. And we'll channel in guides that are best suited for the group that's here today, as well as everyone out there, because I filmed today. And um, they will bring in a general message for us, what is most important for us to know. But I also take questions. So we'll pass around paper, pens, and the reason I do that is so we can get the questions on the camera. Um, and feel free, it's an open forum, to ask whatever questions you have. I just ask that if it's something really personal, we try to phrase it in a way that would help everybody, right? So instead of, you know, if somebody's talking specifically about, you know, a health problem, for example, we might broaden that to help people out there who are watching the channeling understand better how they can also be served in some way. So this has been a very interesting journey for me. Um, this was not at all what I intended to do with my life. Um, I lived a very mainstream life in a very mainstream world. I got a four-year college degree in marketing, business, public relations. Worked in that world, was very successful for a very long time. I ran an environmental um, company marketing department, four offices, five offices in the Midwest, traveled a lot. Got married, had two children. This is my first child, I just couldn't bear, couldn't bear to leave her at daycare. You know, I was that career mom who's like, I'm this, I can do this, this is no problem. And then I was like, no, I need to stay at home. Walked in the door, gave my notice, quit my job, and um, loved this life, you know, delved in. And I'm, I'm the oldest of three kids. I'm that A-type personality, right? I'm, I'm a perfectionist. I do everything to a T. So all that perfectionist energy that I put into my career, I took home with me. And I ran everything under the sun related to my kids. I was the PTA vice president. I was the Girl Scout troop organizer. I ran the local church group. I ran the social group in the neighborhood. You name it, everyone came to me. And, and I loved that life. It was something that I, I felt a lot of joy you know, doing. But um, as many of us come to our awakenings due to a struggle in our lives, I did as well. And after the birth of my second child, I started to have some issues with pain. And I had this pain in my low back, my hip, and my leg. And I was going to doctors, you know, therapists, all kinds of different practitioners trying to get a diagnosis. And each year when I'd get that insurance card, I'd have that renewed faith, you know, choose a new doctor, get a new plan. And each year I was getting worse and worse and worse. I was prescribed anti-inflammatories, anti um, pain meds. I was washing it down with alcohol every night as I was cooking dinner, right? Well, about 2010, 2009, 2010, um, my family decided to make a move. And I was not in favor of this move. It was a relocation due to a job. And I really dug my heels in because I lived in this really beautiful neighborhood where I was in charge of all these things. You know, I was the PTA mom in this PTA world. And I had this pain issue and everyone took care of me. You know, if I needed something from the grocery store, for example, my neighbors would call me up and say, hey, you're having a bad day. Give me your list. You know, I'll go to the grocery store for you or let me pick your kids off, up off the bus because, you know, we don't want you to have to walk down there. So I didn't really have to get better. Right. And what I believe is the universe knows exactly what you need to get better. And that's what happened to me. The universe picked me up and dropped me off in a new neighborhood across town where I couldn't make any of that old stuff work to save my life. 
tried to be the PTA vice president, they hated me. Tried to run the local Girl Scout troops and organizations, it was a disaster. Couldn't make a friend to save my life. I had no support at all. I was 40 years old, had to take a pretty hard look at myself in the mirror, and I knew something had to change. Well, synchronistically enough, I found myself in a neighborhood where I was exposed to Eastern philosophy. And I grew up Catholic, Italian, you know, very strict family. Nobody did any of this stuff. Meditation was foreign to me. You know, any type of Eastern philosophy practice was foreign to me. But I was exposed to it in this new neighborhood. And I started to delve in and, and check out meditation because I read that meditation could help me to disconnect from my pain. And about this time, because of the stress of this move, my pain had really become exasperated to the point where I was actually having my nerves severed every six months. And I had a defining moment where I found myself in that pain clinic. And I had to go back every couple of weeks because the side effect of the nerve severing was muscle spasms. So I had these very intense muscle spasms and they would put the electrodes on me and I was laying there and I was looking around and everyone around me looked like they were ready to go. You know, and I thought, here I was, 40 years old, in this place that I just did not belong. So I started to meditate. I figured, what the heck? This is worth a shot, right? Very religiously, with all that A-type personality, I scheduled my meditations morning, afternoon, and evening. And I started to notice some really interesting things taking place. I was feeling a little bit better, you know, pain-wise. But more than that, I was starting to hear things. I was hearing voices. I was hearing words. And I was negating that as my mind. You know, I thought, oh, gosh, I'm so bad at this meditation thing. My mind's making stuff up. I need to get better at this. Um, but what really got my attention was when I was walking about my day between meditations, you know, visiting the local grocery <laughs> store, whatever it may be, I was having conversations with people and I was hearing things outside of meditation that I thought people said that I didn't really hear out loud. And so I'd get home and I would scratch my head and think, huh, did they really say that to me out loud? And if they said that to me, I didn't respond. And that's pretty rude. So I started to accuse myself of being an extremely poor listener. But what I ended up finding out was I'm a very excellent listener. And all of this culminated in one event for me, 2010 Christmas, which was my awakening to spirit, which sent me on this journey. Um, it was Christmas morning, and I was making a meal for my family. I'm the oldest of three kids, have everyone to my house. And I was making a beef tenderloin that morning. And there was a very special recipe I used ready to marinate, you know, all the stuff you don't usually do on any given day. And I woke up that morning excited to make this recipe, went to the pantry, and realized I had forgotten to purchase three very key ingredients that I needed for this recipe. There was a beef stock, a red wine, and a spice that I needed. And I went through the pantry got on a stool, started pushing stuff around, you know, thinking I can mock this thing up, right? Surely I've got something. And didn't find anything that was even remotely close. And so, you know, all the grocery stores are closed. It's Christmas and holidays. So I started calling around, even like the local gas station, knowing they'd have some items on their shelf, which of course I didn't have. And I decided that my stress levels were getting a little too high that day, that I needed to go meditate, right? Because this was my practice. If, if my stress was getting high, my pain was going to increase, I would go straight to meditation. So I told my girls, you know, mom needs a few minutes, went into my bedroom, shut the door, and went into this very beautiful deep meditation very quickly that day. And I heard three words that forever changed my life. And those three words were, I am Jacob. And it was very loud deep male voice, as if in the room with me. You know, I had to open my eyes. It really shook me out of the meditation. And, and I looked around, and I tried to communicate back, but I didn't get anywhere that day. Um, but honestly, I didn't feel frightened. I didn't feel afraid. I just had this beautiful, peaceful, buzzy energy come over me. And it was very loving. And I thought, wow, I don't know what that was, but this is Christmas morning. I can salt and pepper this thing. This is ridiculous that I was so stressed out, right? So I walked back out to the kitchen. I opened the pantry door, and there on the shelf in a very neat row right at eye level in three sealed containers were the ingredients I needed for the tenderloin. 
And um, I was overjoyed. You know, I thought, wow, I manifested something into my physical reality. I had been studying law of attraction a little bit, just delving into that. Um, I had been studying Esther Hicks and, and Abraham, that works Abraham. But what's really funny is I loved the books, but I didn't believe Esther was channeling. I was like, you know, these, these books are really cool, but this whole channeling thing, I, you know, I don't know. And um, I didn't tell a darn soul about that. You know, I, I just went about that day, made the dinner, had a really, a really beautiful time. But um, it piqued my curiosity enough to really want to know what was going on with me. And so from that moment on, I just became very intentional. I delved in. I started reading about it. I started asking about it when I was meditating. I started writing in a journal. So I would meditate. I'd start hearing things, and I would come to, and I would write what I heard. And I noticed little things, little subtle things, like, you know, I would hear things in, in ways that I wouldn't say them. You know, I might say, um, you know, you should sit in that chair, but, but I would hear, sit in that chair, you should. You know, something, it was almost like talking a little different or backwards, or I would, I would hear things or, or realize that I was learning things that I didn't know anything about, like, extraterrestrials, which I wasn't ready to talk about to anybody. Listen, I was doing this in my closet. It was the PTA mom. You know, I wasn't going to go to the local bake sale and be like, you know, anyone hearing from extraterrestrials, you know? (laughs) So I believe in extraterrestrials today, not because it's something that I always believed in because I started connecting with them, right? So it got to the point where I couldn't write enough down because I was getting so much information. I was going deeper into trance. I was getting so much, so much that I started to voice record myself on my iPhone. You know, I thought, let me just press record and I'll say what I hear. And I was completely blown away and amazed when I listened back to my recordings because I would notice my voice would change. You know, my, my voice would get really high. If there was an angelic being that was present that was female, my voice would get very low if I was connecting with a different type of a, you know, maybe an archangel or someone like that. And I started to realize that the information in these messages that I was getting was pretty significant. And I was told very early on that I was here on the planet to be a channel in the world and that I had a mission. And that mission was to do what I'm doing right now. And I said, that sounds great, but that's not at all what I'm here to do in this life. I was afraid of it. I didn't want to acknowledge it. And it took me to shift my vibration to connect with the people that I needed to connect with to bring that out of me more. You know, people like Ethan, the flower of life, to have that collective around me to support me to the point where I had people saying, you got to put this stuff out there, you know, because I, I, I couldn't even listen to it, to be honest. I really didn't want any part of it. But I, I believe that also part of the reason this happened to me, you know, in this move, I found myself in a home where I had a reverse osmosis filter in my basement that was filtering out my fluoride. Now, I knew nothing about fluoride and how detrimental it was to this type of connection. I just thought I had this fancy filter in the basement that was making the water taste better. And in addition to that, in that home, I learned about GMO food. And I went through my pantry with vigor, and I threw everything away and started eating all organic. So all of these things are happening to me. I'm raising my vibration. I'm raising my vibration. I'm raising my vibration. I'm connecting more. I'm meditating more. I'm being more intentional. I'm questioning and asking. And as a matter of fact, I did ask Jacob. You know, I said, who are you and why are you here? And I got a really beautiful response. He said that I was a past life connection to him and that in a past life, He was a young boy who was lost, and I took him in, I clothed him, I fed him, I cared for him in that life. So he came back in this life indebted to me to help me remember who I am and and what I had to do here. And um, at one point in my evolution, I was scrubbing down the kitchen counters, you know, making a meal, and um, I was just having this two-way conversation in my head with some being, you know, just talking and I stopped and I went, I used to do this as a child. I remember myself having these two-way conversations going on all the time, right? But I think it just got shut down in me because, you know, we're subjected to programming here, religious programming, institutional programming, all of these things, beliefs. We, We form our identities through them. And so I'm very grateful 
that I found that connection to Jacob because it served me so much in this life and it helped me to find my truth. And now I have purpose. You know, I have purpose in my life. What I do here on the planet, it isn't work, although of course nothing comes easy, right? We always have to make an effort, but I love what I do. It's serving other people, it's serving me. And as a matter of fact, I did heal myself 100% of my chronic pain. And I wouldn't say it was one thing or another, right? It wasn't like I just got that diagnosis, I got the answer. I did get a diagnosis. My hip joint in my, in my left hip is pretty much obliterated. It's on x-ray, it looks like a strand of spaghetti. It's supposed to be nice and straight. It, there's nothing that can fix it. Um, but what happened was I had shifted my vibration so much that I was magnetically attracting the things on my path to heal me in such a way that when I look back at that time in my life, there's no way that could have happened otherwise. There's no way. It was divinely timed. I got the, the, just the right person who had the right expertise that led me to the next person that led me to a nutritionist who, you know, was taking the last person for free when I couldn't pay for it. You know, the whole, like the books, the experiences I had, they were so divinely timed and so unique that I'm 100% pain-free today. You know, I still have this abnormality in my hip. Do I struggle with it, with it from time to time? Yes. I have cycles in my life where it comes back. And I believe that, you know, physical pain isn't just physical. It's non-physical too. So as we raise our dimension, we sometimes have to go back and revisit things that we healed in the past through a new perspective. But when we have the vibration that's aligned with that type of assistance, I think we can heal anything. And that's truly what happened to me. So today, I connect with so many different beings. I consider myself a very open channel. Um, at one point in my evolution, Jacob came in and told me he, he was done working with me, that his work with me was done, and I was actually very surprised. I just thought he'd be here forever. and. Um, about that time, I had started connecting with a collective called Jeremiah, and they're a ninth dimensional collective of a variety of different master teachers that have walked an earth incarnation. And actually, the prophet Jeremiah is one of those beings that steps forward. And you know, I asked, why? Why? Why would the prophet Jeremiah you know, speak through me? And he said that his life was very um, similar to what light workers on the planet would go through in the coming years. And I didn't know much about him, so I looked him up, and sure enough, at a very young age, he was given a message from God. And he was meant to take that message out into the world, and there was a lot of people that didn't believe him. And there was a result that came of that. It was not an easy journey for him. So he shows up a lot, and the collective Jeremiah shows up a lot in my sessions and in my live, um, my live events. Um, I connected with the Palladians. I have a very intricate connection with the Ninth Dimensional Palladian Collective. I work with them a lot. Um, Lemurians, uh, most recently the Atlantean dolphins I've been connecting with. Um, I connect with the Phoenicians. In session, I'm a very open channel. I still connect with archangels. Um, when I do private sessions, I work with your energy. So we'll, we'll connect with your energy and whatever beings are here to support you will come in. And I believe we all have a DNA genetic connection to a variety of different beings that support us at different times in our, in our record that we're meant to hear from or we're meant to understand things from. Um, I channel courses now. I've channeled um, four um, courses, Ascension courses, with the Lemurians, the Palladians, and the Atlanteans. I just recently started downloading these beautiful light codes from the Atlanteans. They are graphically designed. Um, and it just, it, it amazes me. It, it is a gift that, as I stay open to it, expands and it evolves beyond what I ever imagined it could be. And that's one of the things I tell people when they're trying to access their gifts and they're getting really frustrated is not to get so tied into the way it has to show up for you or it has to be. Or, you know, if you've already started connecting or healing, Allow it to change because the more you stay open and you flow with your vibration and you raise your dimension, amazing things can happen. And um, that's truly what happened to me. So today when we channel, we'll probably connect with a variety of different guides, teachers, masters that will come in with different messages. And, um, and I get direction on them. So I have this incredible 
feeling of direction when they come in. You know, I know with the Palladians, they come in straight from the crown of my head. I get Arcturians over here. I get Lemurians up here. I get the Atlanteans over here. They all come in. I connect with um, Mary Magdalene. She's a very soft energy, very loving energy. Um, aside from that, I was told that we would be walking a very difficult transitional time on the planet. And I didn't understand, or didn't understand, I didn't understand at the time what that meant, but I'm starting to see it evolve. And I have a really good grasp now based on the channeled material I've been getting over the last couple of years. And what I'm seeing in my clients and in the collective, truly what that transition is involving. The guides that I work with talk a lot about the splitting of timelines here, which means that we're actually going to have two forms of collective consciousness that are operating on the planet at the same time. The third dimensional beings and those that are in a more fifth dimensional energy. <clears throat> and that's actually happening right now. Now, how many of you, I mean, you're, you're all here. You're obviously light workers. You're obviously operating in a more fifth dimensional consciousness. I mean, how many of us have family members, friends, you know, acquaintances that are still in that third dimension and we see it so vividly, right? They're living in a different world. They have a different perspective. It's not that it's wrong, right? It's just that it's not aligning, right? It's not parallel to where we are. And so many of us have had a hard time with that. You know, that's been our struggle over the last year, year and a half. Been a lot of changes here and it's been within us and it's been within the earth. Um, I believe that mother earth has a record. I believe she's a living, breathing being. I'm actually channeling a book on creation that is extremely fascinating. Um, she herself has undergone a very turbulent transition in the last year and a half. She has changed her frequency. She's changed her dimension. She has a new harmonic resonance, and that has to affect us. And we've had some very intense solar frequencies and solar energies. Those come to create shifts in us. Those are informational and we have received a lot of information. And a lot of people have been going through the chaos of that informational adjustment. And I call it the integration phase, right? Where all these things that have gone on in our world that we've known for a very long time have shifted, dropped away, changed, or we're looking at them differently. Right? That's been relationships. That's been our work in the world. You know, that's been the way that we've earned money. It's the way that we've done our healing. All of these areas have been in upheaval. But what's interesting is lately, um, and I'll go back what the guides have been talking about in previous messages, is that Mother Gaia was going to come to a leveling out in her frequency mid-November. And I'm just curious how many of you are feeling that. A lot of people have been coming into my session saying they feel like they're in a void, like all of a sudden things got really quiet around them. You know, it's like things were changing really fast. The relationship was dropping away. The work was changing. They lost the job, you know, whatever it was. And now there's this void where things feel really still. They can't see what's coming next, but they just know that they're aligned with something that's different. And I felt that come in too in November. And that's what that feeling is all about. That's the earth coming to that, that frequency leveling off. And so... The result of that is truly this shift in this splitting of the timelines. Because what the guide said were, was that um, we had so many varying levels of speed here, right? You know, we had people that were kind of awake, you know, but ignoring it. And we have people that were really awake and we have some that don't even know what's going on. But this, this shift in Mother Gaia has actually caused a leveling out where we're going to see more uh, of the similar types of vibrations and people forming collective consciousness. And, you know, we can see we're walking into a time of revolution. You know, we see it happening right now on the planet. We had to have this shake up, right, in order for the opportunity to come to bridge those people from the third dimension into the fifth. And that's truly what I see going on right now. But we have to remember that we are creators. And we create here collectively through our own singular experience. And I cannot stress that enough from the messages I've gotten from the guides that I work with. 
there's so many of us that came here as light workers, and we are so um, focused on service. We want to change the things that we see happening that we know are not in our best interest, and we want to take action, you know, outward. And there's a place and a time for that. You know, we we do take action outward, but we first have to work on this stuff. And and I think that's the time this this clearing space, this really quiet space that we're in. It's a perfect time to do that. We have this structure I've been talking about, and, and structure is just a fancy term for we connect to all things. You know, that that water body out there that's contaminated Fukushima, you know, we caused that because of what's in here. And how are we going to clean that up? When what's in here comes together in harmony, the technology is going to show up. We don't have to create it. We don't have to worry about it. It's all vibrationally attuned and aligned, and that's what I believe. But that structure exists within our own experience. So now is a beautiful time to really put out there into the universe to create that new structure the way that you want it. We, ha- we are now more collectively focused than ever before, and that's where manifestation truly comes in. We've learned manifestation through a very singularly based energy. And that's okay. That's where we were. We were in the third dimension. We were like, I want the car. I want the relationship. I want the house. I want the clothes. You know, a collective form of manifestation is different. We can still have that stuff, right? But we become more collectively focused, more mission focused, more purpose focused. And those things come in to support us, right? There's, there's a connection between those things and how they arrive. Relationships are really huge. You know, that's, that's one that stands out for me in my client sessions. A lot of us manifested relationships in that dimension as well. And they weren't serving us from a collective standpoint. And now we're coming to realize that, that this isn't aligned with my energy. This isn't aligned with my imprint. And it doesn't mean that relationship can't change, you know. We get to choose the way that we want to interact in our soul contracts, but the other person has free will as well. So we get to manifest the healing of that however however we wish. And I believe there's infinite potentials. We have infinite timeline potentials running within us and within the collective. You know, there's so many people that are talking about, you know, you know, Donald Trump and, you know, here comes World War, you know, 15 or whatever it's going to be, right? Is there a timeline that exists for World War 15? Yes. Absolutely there is. Do we have to match it? No, because there's timelines of history that exist where there were technologies here, you know, that we used for peace and for healing. You know, we see those all over the planet right now. If we look, we can match those. And I believe that's where we're going. It's the same thing in our physical experience. We have infinite timeline potentials running. We get to choose. You know, we're always creating them anew. And we have history that comes through us that we we relive and we're meant to transmute and raise the dimension on. I mean, how many of us have had that chronic relationship that shows up time and time again in a different person? It's history. We replay history. We just haven't raised the dimension on that history yet. And when we raise the dimension on it, that's when we heal it. Right? And that's what we're doing here on the earth. You can see it. You know, we're we're replaying history. It's an opportunity. It's coming up to show us. We now have a different perspective to see it through and to experience it through. And this is the opportunity I see in front of us. And I truly think that we have the ability to turn this around. No question. I went really fast. I channel a lot of that. <laughs> Any questions? So, and this may be kind of a personal question, but how did your family get to Yeah. this? They didn't, and they still don't. <laughs> they tolerate it. Yeah. That was... Oh, yeah, Mike, yeah, you know, okay, so I'll I'll give you both sides of the coin. You know, as a mom, I was terrified to tell my kids I was channel. Not for them, not for the fact that I didn't think they would understand, but for what the other parents might do to them, meaning that they wouldn't be invited to anyone else's house ever again. And um, an interesting thing happened when I started to raise my vibration. They started to do it as well, and they were connecting before I even knew. So funny story, my oldest daughter, we were on a trip to um, New York, school trip, and we went to the 9-11 um, memorial. And I don't know how many of you have been there, but um, 
it's it's kind of like you have to go through TSA and ticketing. It's is a barrier, you know. And it, it's um, it, they have the shirts with the, light, the logos and the hats. It's you know, it's kind of you know, strange. But um, we were standing in line. We got we got dropped off about five blocks out. We were standing in line for ticketing. On the way in, my daughter freaked out because she saw something in the street. And I could tell when I looked at her because I felt the terror in those streets. I felt the density in those streets. It was almost suffocating to me. And I was looking around at the group we were in and no one else, everyone was just kind of having a light conversation. But my daughter was mortified. Her face was mortified. She felt it just like I did. So as we're walking in, she's having experiences. I'm having experience. She's seeing, I'm hearing. So I, I took her aside in that courtyard and I actually told her that day that I was channel, you know? And I had never done it before. And as soon as I did that, my youngest daughter started blossoming. She's an incredible medium, so gifted. She can make crystal grids. She's just very talented, very talented, spiritual, spiritually gifted girl. Now, the rest of my family, you know, again, I said Catholic, Italian, right? Petrified to tell them that I was a channel. And I just, I did it, I did it in steps, you know? I let the cat out of the bag with one person and then another. And what's funny is we have so much fear around this, and it's so false, because the more I was in my power, the more I was letting the cat out of the bag, the stronger I was. Now, it didn't mean those people on the other end accepted me. You know, when I get when I go to Christmas together, nobody really wants to ask me how my channeling career is going, <laughs> you know. But um, they're, they, they tolerate it. They know what I do in the world, and they're not comfortable with it. But that's okay, you know. That's okay. I'm not here to change them. Although what I have seen is because of me, they've made a lot of changes. And I do get that really funny text sometimes, like from a, a family member at midnight. I think I heard something in my room. I've heard this my whole life, and it's coming back. What do you think? Do you think it could be real? So, so they come to me, you know, with questions. Or the one thing I noticed, too, is that they're all eating differently. You know, some of them are starting to choose different foods, bring different foods into their life. Um, so we have an effect, right? The, when we, the guides always say it really beautifully, that everyone in our life in some way is in a soul contract with us. And the only responsibility we have in that contract is to live our highest truth. Because when we do, they get exactly what they need from us. And we try to force it sometimes, with, especially with family. And it's because we care. You know, we love them. We, we want them to see the way we see. But the more I backed off of that and just became myself and was just open with who I am, you know, I feel like they're changing because of me. And I'm, I'm having an experience there, too. It's, you know, it's really helping me to um, be more confident and strong in who I am in the world. Right. That's what I was going to say. That's my sense of it is that you seem like the more you interact with them and them not being accepting, it's more you feel just strong and confident. It's like I just have to be who I am. And yeah. Well, family is interesting. You know, uh, we have blood family and we have family that we manifest. And, you know, I've manifested so many incredible family members. My family has grown, you know, in the work that I do in the world. It's just I'm so grateful for that. So. So my family still loves me. I still have connection with my family. They don't get what I do. They don't want to talk about what I do. And, and I'm okay with that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. My daughter's, though, different story. You know, like my oldest daughter's in college. She'll phone me and say, can you, can you channel for my friends? You know? Like they, they get really excited about it. And they've actually found new friends, too. They went through a very interesting transition where a lot of the friends that were not resonating the same way, they are now dropped away. And they started to see their friends differently, and they've manifested a whole new group of friends. And it, it's not easy to watch our kids go through that, you know. But, but I see where they ended up, and I think it's really incredible. So one of the things I forgot to mention, we were going to talk um, about Flower of Life a little bit at the beginning. For those of you who don't know what Flower of Life is, um, Ethan here is the founder, director. I am the executive director of the organization um, we are here to further human consciousness in the world in all forms. But the reason I thought about that is conscious youth. You know, one of the things that we created here was um, conscious youth in response to some of the things I was seeing my kids go through, you know, both in school or with the emerging of their gifts. There really aren't any resources out there for kids to help understand these gifts. And a lot of them are emerging in a time when their parents are not aware of what's going on. And so I'll, I get a lot of questions from parents online on Facebook and an email saying, you know, my kid's going through this and I don't know how to handle it. So we get the kids together um, once a month, twice a month actually, remotely, 
Uh, we started it here local. We've grown it out to other areas where we have various topics that we talk about that are conscious topics for kids, and they get to kind of feed off each other and ask their questions, and it's so fun. Oh, my gosh, these kids are they are far beyond us. They're just, they teach the class. <laughs> we don't need a teacher. They teach the class. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Can you talk more about how to get involved more? Do you guys do this stuff yeah. regularly? This is my first time, actually. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and Ethan will do that, too, in his session. But we, um, So we have a local group here. We have our core group that meets here, but we have members all around the world. Um, you can shoot us an email just in general and let us know um, that you're interested and we'll set up a time to talk to you. We have so many different avenues for, for assistance, you know, and ways you can get involved. We have an expo that we do every year here in town. It's a very large expo that we bring in experts from all over the country on various forms of um, you know, metaphysics, consciousness, health, longevity, extraterrestrial conversation. All of it comes together. We just had it. Is that for weeks ago? November 4th, yeah, in downtown Detroit. We'll have another one next year, November. Um, we have a conscious activist movement, not going out in the streets and picketing, but actually connecting with solutions that we can expand to the world and we can make available to people to help them live their life better. We have a magazine, a conscious magazine uh, online that you can check out. We have writers and we have experts that write for us in that magazine. Um, Conscious Youth, what am I forgetting? So many different avenues. We've, oh, we just launched several new projects too. Yeah. Community, yeah. Community projects. So, so yeah, send us an email. Or our, our cards are over here. You can you know give us a call or shoot us an email. We'd love to have you. And we have positions for everybody regarding you know volunteerism. It doesn't matter how much time, how little time you know, what your gifts are, we can always find a space for you. What's yeah. the age group for the young people? Nine to 18. And that's just kind of a guideline. You know, we've had kids a little younger that have been in the group, just depending on, you know, what they're... Some of these kids are just, you know, seven-year-olds. They they can be in the group and be just fine. They're just so, you know... Yeah, yeah. It's just different than... Mm-hmm. Yeah, our, we've, we've actually been um, planning an alternative school. That's how conscious, conscious Youth is kind of stepping us into an alternative school for kids. That's something that we've been planning behind the scenes, and we've got you know, major projects to actually build a facility here. So we've got big projects in the works. Um, so join us, and you can be a part of that. And, and for me, it was great because it was an outlet. You know, when I first awakened, I was so angry you know, it's like, there are chemtrails in the sky? What the heck is going on here, right? It was like walking out and grabbing my mailman and going, do you see that up there? You know? And I mean, I really needed an outlet to constructively, you know, work on some of this stuff. And that's what Flower of Life provided for me. I, I was fortunate enough to stumble into one of Ethan's energy transfers. Um, how many years ago was it? I don't even know. Four years ago. And... Um, that was around the time I was, you know, beginning to awaken and, um, you know, did an astrology reading with him and backed out of the driveway as the executive director, not having any clue what that meant. But um, what I've noticed, I've had the pleasure of seeing, is that all the people that have come to this team as volunteers, regardless of how long they've stayed or how short they've stayed, their lives have been completely changed. They end up on their path. I mean, very similar to me. That's what happened to me. You know, Ethan's energy has a way of pulling that out of you. He's got an incredible light worker program that I know he'll talk about. But um, I think just being surrounded by that energy, you start to live differently. You start to center yourself. You realize who you are. You have the support. And then the tools are available to you. I just started living my life differently. And this is where I ended up. You know, Ethan has been a huge support in the work that I've done in the world, helping me to bring that into a more mainstream type of experience because a lot of people are struggling with that too. You know, we know we have gifts, we know we're here to serve, but we know we have to pay the bills and how are we gonna get from here to there? You know, it's a big jump. And um, he's, he's excellent at that, he's excellent at that. But I've seen all of our team members completely transition in the time that they've been with us. The, from what they were when they came 
to finding who they were in the world when they left or, or they're either still with us, you know, working on the team. So it's a, it's not just about, you know, putting in what you have to offer. You really get something huge back, I believe, with this organization. So anything, is there still time? Okay, any other final questions? Okay, all right, so. We're going to do a channeling now. And the way I do this, for those of you who weren't here when I first started, is um, I do take questions. So we'll, we'll connect with a collective or guides that are best suited for everyone who has assembled here in this room and beyond, because I filmed today. And that goes up on YouTube for everyone to experience. And um, there's always a general message. So I just allow that general message to come through, whatever is in the highest good of the collective to understand. Mm -hmm. And then I take questions. So um, I'll pass out paper and pens. Thank you, Robert. Um, and we write the questions down so that we can get them on the camera so they can be heard by others so everyone knows what the answer is pertaining to. And um, feel free, uh, it's open forum for questions. If you have something personal, we might reword it so that it's something very specific that everyone can benefit from as opposed to something very specific to who you are, right? Um, try to phrase them that way more universally if possible so everyone takes the benefit. So I'm a trans channel, and I can also consciously channel. Um, when I do lectures like this, or what, sometimes if you might have heard me on a show, like a telesummit or a radio show, even when I'm speaking just as me, I'm usually channeling, you know, channeling that. But um, what I'll do now is a trans channel, so I, my consciousness is actually completely out of the way. I feel myself kind of over there in the room, and I'm an observer. I'm an observer of the information. I'm often questioning things that are going on. Um, it's funny, I have this little process, you know, sometimes someone will ask a question and I'll be like, I don't know the answer to that. How are we gonna answer that? You know, I get a little like, uh, but I never have to worry um, because the guides always know the answer. I also twitch a little bit when I channel. It's just the uh, difference in frequencies between the density that we exist in here on the planet and the density of the beings that we're connecting with. We're ready. Greetings to the collective. We are the eighth dimensional Arcturian collective and we are also a part of your energy body as we come in support of you. Knowing that in your DNA genetic makeup, that each of you are a part of all of us. We come together as one. When these transmissions take place, it is through your intention that we are all joined as one, meaning that there is a lift of vibration. And we are pleased to also connect with you in a way that is centering of the heart, knowing that your heart frequency is a part of the way that you connect to each other in this life as human form, as human beings. We have an important message that we want to bring to the collective today, and it is in regards to your vibrational stance and your collective energy. Knowing that you have had a recent shift here upon your planet, we wish to talk about that shift in great detail and also give you some perspective to view your lives through as you are moving in a new time-space reality. When we talk about time-space reality, many of you become very confused as to the way that time and space are defined. And we know that there have been many definitions brought forward in past transmissions about time and space. But we want to remind you that time as an energy is not given to you. It is not something that is linear. It is not something that you must operate within. Time is created by you. In other words, with every experience you are having, with every intention, with every creation, time is evolving through you into being. And we ask you all to take a breath on that in this moment, knowing that the illusion of time that has been presented to you is one of the most resistant programs you have running within your structure. We can relate this to the way in which you function in your day-to-day -day reality, meaning that you are watching the clock, there are tasks that you must pertain to, and that clock is taking you into a dimension that keeps you perspecting into each moment, either in future or in past. 
when you are percepting time as the resistant energy that you have been taught, it becomes difficult for you as human beings to stay in the present moment frequency, which we equate to neutrality. What neutrality is truly is a source connection of your being to the one. Because when you are in the present moment, you are accepting of all things. You are omnipresent with all things. And according to your record, what has just happened here on your planetary being has been a divine alignment of her DNA frequency with your own. This has allowed you to be creators in a far different way. But we caution you about your use of time. Because if you find yourself paying attention to linear time and using it as the resistant energy we feel you have been taught it is, it precludes that DNA activation, that instantaneous manifestation, that connection to source or neutrality to fully charge itself within your frequency, within your structure. And there is an important reason we bring this up. We wish to speak today about this transition in relationship to consciousness and what consciousness truly is and how time interacts with consciousness. Because if you are creating time, what you must realize and what you must understand is that everything that you create here is in some way impacted or impacting all things. So if that is the case, if the past is that relevant within your world, how is it that you are to stay within neutrality? You see, there is an intention that you come with as a human being that is forgotten. And that intention is that the way in which you create is not to suffer, is not for others to suffer. The way in which you create and have created is an energy that is separate of you yet exists in consciousness. Let's give you an example. Let us say you are deciding in your life, in this moment in time, that you wish to create through writing. You wish to create a book. And that book is in physicality, yes, so it is a physical action that you are taking. And once that book is created, you decide that it must be read. It must be distributed so that others may interact with it. And so you go about your activity to distribute this book to others. And what you see is the physical action that you are taking in the distributing, in the results. And the results are either pleasing to you or they are not pleasing to you. But we see this creation of this book and every part of its experience as a timeline. And within that timeline, you are creating the time as well as the space of the experience. So regardless of the physical action you take, there is also a non-physical manifestation. So let us say in the distributing of this book, there is frustration. Things are not going your way. Perhaps the publisher that you choose is not the correct one for you. And the way that the book is distributed is not to your liking. There would be much emotion Yes, that would be brought to the surface in this timeline. Emotion from a perspective of consciousness is the same as time. So all of the emotion that you felt, the frustration, perhaps you blamed yourself for choosing the wrong publisher or the way that this book was distributed. That emotion in itself created time, which is consciousness, and that consciousness or that time exists in a form. All you see is the physical manifestation, but you do not see the consciousness that you created in that timeline. But that consciousness does have an effect. That time, it stays within a frequency. And it, it affects all things. Through the law of the universe, it must affect all things, not just human, but it also is connected through a web of consciousness we call the universal time grid. And other beings are affected in some way as well. 
depending on their dimensional reality and the way that they interconnect with you. But how are you connected? We want to make this a more planetarily based message. So in this timeline, there was much frustration. There were things that went wrong. There were mistakes that were made. Perhaps you blamed yourself over those mistakes. And that consciousness exists. You as a whole being are taking that time, that time that you create, that space that you create, and you are categorizing it into linear fashion. So you realize that, yes, that was a difficult struggle, even when you are on the other side of it. But that difficult struggle, energetically, it must stay with you in some way, shape, or form. This is where things have begun to change here on your planet. Because in the past, that consciousness that stayed with you, that experience, was something that became a part of your identity. And things were categorized as imprinted energy. And let us say, for the sake of this example, that imprinted energy was either success or it was failure. So perhaps you imprinted this entire timeline, this entire experience with this book as a failure. And you created a time space reality that is now consciousness that exists within a linear time frame. You've taken that and you've made it a part of your identity. You can see how that didn't serve you. Regardless of the way that you may have thought you healed it, it was always integrated with you. And in some way, it affected your manifestation here. But what has happened most recently here on the planet that we see as the ability for you to now begin to heal your collective consciousness is that you are now operating in a new frequency and you must create time and space differently in different dimensions. So if you've raised your frequency and you're existing in a new dimension, the rules of engagement, we will say, or the universal laws that apply to time and space are going to operate differently as well. So we want to bring in the conversation of the light body versus the physical body. And we know that this has been a topic of discussion in past transmissions as well. But the light body for you, now being activated differently, does not have to function in that same way through linear time. Regardless of the linear time that you observe here on this planet, what your light body knows is travel and access into consciousness. So for example, those who are healers, those who are connecting to higher dimensions, they are accessing their light body in a time-space reality that is different than the dimension you might reside in. But you now all have the ability to do this. This is why we have said that karma being resolved here in the next several years is going to be a very prominent focus because it is an opportunity to very quickly resolve forms of consciousness that are not equal to your truth. So going back to the imprint, if you had an imprint of failure, that was a consciousness, that was a time-space reality that integrated with your identity, was that equal to your truth? Of course we would say no. But because of the dimension you functioned in, it became a part of your identity in such a way that it was your truth. Even if you decided that you moved past that timeline, you moved past that experience, in some way it was still affecting you at a very subconscious level. It had to because it was consciousness, it was vibration. And this is how you operate. But now the opportunity that you have is to release those imprints in a more expedited fashion. And we want to give you some tools and some remembrance as to how to do this, as well as some practical examples about how this works within the collective spaces. When you are working with consciousness, what you must understand is that it is all things and it is omnipresent. So in this room, 
that all of you are functioning within in the moment, there is a consciousness that is being created. And all beings in this room are having an effect on that consciousness. Your identity that you've brought into this room, the way in which you interact with other beings in this room, the multidimensional beings that have come in to assist this room, every thought that you have had, every frequency that you have ever experienced, it now intersects, it intertwines. And many of you may think, well, this is quite difficult because I don't want to accept that imprint of another person. What if they are lowering my frequency in this moment? What if this collective consciousness that we are now forming is a detrimental one? And we would say that within every form of collective consciousness you enter, that you have free will, that you forget this. You are sovereign beings that came with free will. So regardless of the collective consciousness you decide to interact with, you have the distinct ability through your perception of that consciousness to resonate in your truth and to only receive the higher dimensional aspects or information that that consciousness allows you to take away. Many of you who are empathic beings have struggled with this in your lives because you are so extrasensory and you have been so tuned into your gifts that in collective forms of consciousness, you have taken things away that have had a physical manifestation on your body, on your emotion, on your creation. But knowing that time-space reality functions differently, overriding your free will and moving into a higher dimension allows you to operate differently you get to now interact with collective consciousness through your intention in a very crystalline state, which means a very quick vibrational harmonic. And we ask for you to consider this. A more grounded interpretation of this would be that when you are connecting with collective consciousness, go into that space with intention. Go into that space knowing that you bring all things to it and all things are brought to you. And what are the things that you wish to bring and heal? Is it a negative thing for you to bring up an imprint of failure and allow it to be healed through another? We would say no. We all receive exactly what we need in the moment when we are coming from a higher perspective or a higher intention into collective forms of consciousness. Let's break this down further into perhaps some of the family scenarios that were brought up previously in this session. Many of you are existing in collective forms of consciousness you call your families. And those families are, in fact, souls that you have a DNA genetic link to here on the planet but also non-physically and energetically. Everything that you bring to that form of collective consciousness holds meaning. So if you're bringing an imprint of failure to that collective consciousness, it will be imprinted as well, based on the dominant frequency that is the center core, we'll say. Every collective form of consciousness is attempting to find neutrality. Neutrality is the balance of all things. That means all things healed. So when you come into your family unit, be very careful or very aware about the timelines you're bringing up to relive. Oftentimes, these have not been very prominent in, in their definition. In other words, the feelings crop up from those timelines of failure and you have a vibrational response in that consciousness in regards to those feelings. In simplicity, we always go back to the emotional body as a very easy tool for you to understand the way that you're working within any form of collective consciousness. You are within your family unit, 
and you are feeling as if your emotional body is taking you into a lower dimensional rate of speed, such as, I'm a failure. Begin to recognize the opportunities for healing that exist there. Because regardless of what that form of consciousness has taught you, or what barriers you've put around you to that form of consciousness, There is a moment in which all things have the ability to become neutral. And quite simply, a raise of dimension is equal to a raise of perception, a change in perception. And it has to start within you, within every form of collective consciousness you step into. You bring the time-space reality to it. So the time-space reality you wish to bring should be equal to what you want to see manifest in each form of collective consciousness. Your planetary energy is experiencing this as the macrocosm of what we have just discussed. And you can imagine the forms of consciousness you have on your planet. We know that there are forms of collective consciousness of disease. We know that there are collective forms of consciousness of war. Nature in itself is a collective form of consciousness. Your government, your institutions are forms of collective consciousness that you must interact with each day. Now you've raised your dimensional awareness to be able to see what is taking place there. But what is the free will choice, the sovereign choice you are making each day to use that as a tool for healing? to bring a perception to it that assists you. And this is where we see the human consciousness most becoming stuck in this moment, in this time-space reality you find yourself in, is that the problems have become so big and so exasperated by your collective that the solutions do not seem possible. So you interact with these forms of consciousness each day, your government, your banks, your financial institutions, your learning institutions, but you are feeling the failure, the defeat of that interaction. We ask you to now realize that your interaction with these forms of consciousness is extremely critical to the way that they will be healed. So if you are moving through a time-space reality in a way that you are feeling defeat in all of your interactions, you are not the healer that you came to be. You are creating time. And if you are creating time, there is no form of collective consciousness outside of you that can change the way that you perceive that time. So if you are doing a transaction at the bank, let us say, And in the back of your mind, you realize that that transaction in itself is connected to something bigger that you do not wish to experience here on the planet. Instead of imprinting that in your frequency as failure, as defeat, begin to bring a different energy to it. Very small shifts in the way you interact with consciousness can make a very big difference in the way that consciousness is shifted, in other words. In that bank or that financial institution interaction, the more neutrality that you have, knowing that you are creating differently, becomes very valuable. It is not about the decisions you make, you see. Any of you are blaming yourselves for your decisions or the decisions you must make because society placed a structure around you. It truly isn't about the physical action. It's about the way you perceive time, space, energy, and frequency through those actions that has the ability to shift consciousness. So it's all about you. It's all about your structure. It's all about the way you interact with consciousness. It's all about what you bring to each experience. It's not about the actions you take. It's about taking those actions with the new perspective you have available to you. We want to speak to one more thing 
that's taking place on your planet. And that is the leveling off of the resonance, the harmonic resonance of Mother Gaia. This has been also a consistent message that has come through. Now that this has taken place, many are beginning to feel the adjustments in their own lives, meaning that her leveling off in frequency is your own. But within your physical reality, the energy that you bring to your day becomes quite critical in the way that you manifest. Manifestation as a tool must change with the new harmonic that she is offering. Remember the light body. You have a physical body that is assimilating physical experience and a light body that is assimilating non-physical experience. And what this transition is truly about is about those bodies becoming interconnected, cohesive, not working separately of experience, but working together of experience. That is your ascension program in a nutshell. The way to do this, the way to integrate the light body with the physical body is to always consider your non-physical energy. The space of integration that you find yourself in is a beautiful space in which your non-physical energy can be used for manifestation. There is a new opportunity that you have, an alignment of her grid lines that are running through you in this very moment. Those grid lines are sound harmonics. They help you to understand better the information that you already have within that you're ready to match outside. So the more you can connect to that within space and use it as a tool through your desire, through what you already feel in your heart as purpose, the way that you connect with the collective, the more you build that new framework, that new structure around you. And what we see happening is that as you move into the next several months, the actions are going to pick up again. The actions are going to have meaning that is different. And you are going to be operating in a field of synchronicity that you have never seen before. The reason for this is the magnetics here have changed. And magnetics are equal to synchronicity. So we ask you to be very in tune and very aware through your physical body to those synchronicities, using the light body to activate within you where you wish to go next. And we want to give a practice and activation that you can use for this. So we ask all who are connecting with us to find a center space, to relax the body and begin to breathe. Feeling your feet very firmly planted on the floor and feeling the crown chakra resonating straight up into the collective energies. With each breath, we ask you to relax a little more. We are pleased to bring the Pleiadian Collective in to assist in this activation. With each breath, as you're relaxing the physical body, we ask you to tune in very closely to the harmonics of your heart. That heart center becomes the frequency you hear, the frequency you feel, the magnetics that are now operating, the grid lines that all come together. Harness within you a rhythm. The breath is the activation of that rhythm. It takes all parts of you to the center core, to the center space. Knowing that Gaia's center space is crystalline in energy and yours is as well. That in this moment, the light body is the prominent activation that assists us in our time-space reality manifestations. With each breath, we're moving away from physicality, centering 
your attention into your core, beginning to feel the non-physical energy surrounding you, letting go of the arms, letting go of the hands, allowing yourself to let go of the floor beneath you, knowing that the manifestation of the material of the floor is light as well. The very chair that you sit on becoming less and less physical. Moving through all the chakra fields, through the crown, through the throat, the heart, solar plexus, sacral, and the root. Seeing a fine white crystalline light running through that center core. This is where the light body emanates from. It is always surrounding you. It's always interpreting not only your physical experience, but your non-physicality. Feel the space between your physical body and your light body now. Within that space, there are programs There's an identity that you have formed. There are belief patterns. There are imprints. All of those things have meaning because you perceive them to have meaning. You see, you create time. You bring the meaning to your experience. You bring the meaning to yourself. What we wish for you to feel in this moment and perceive in this moment is the light body coming closer to you. Feel that energy now interacting with your physicality, enveloping your entire form to the point where that crystalline light within that was the fine line in the chakra fields now vibrating and the heart center being the connection between your physicality and the light body. The more that you can sit in quiet focus, releasing your physicality and feeling into the light body, not only the more information will come to you or will you receive, but the more that speed of harmonic becomes integrated. You see, this is the process you are within. All of the work that you have been doing on yourself It has been the inventory of all of those things in that middle space between the physicality and the light body. Those identities, those programs, the failure that you called yourself. You can see that in that middle space, things begin to purge. They can become dissolved or integrated by the light and the physical body coming together. You can picture it like a vice. You are cranking the tool that brings the two sides together, not to squeeze tightly in resistance, but to feel both sides coming together, to feel the cool metal of the vice now activating an energy. This is what your light body allows you to do when it comes in alignment with your physicality. So we encourage you to practice this each day or as many times as you so see fit to assist you in the way that you are creating through time-space reality. And we are pleased to take questions. Could you speak about the levels of consciousness you mentioned, for example, the ninth dimensional Palladian and so on? We are pleased to speak of dimensional levels of consciousness and the difference between these dimensional levels. You see, when you are speaking of dimension, what you must realize is that dimension exists because a collective form of consciousness makes it so, very similar to the example we brought forward previously. When you have a collective form of consciousness that vibrates in a one frequency, a dimensional reality can be held. The difference between dimensional reality is the rate of speed in which that consciousness vibrates, allowing it to activate and receive information. 
we consider 12 dimensional areas of consciousness to already be firmly established here in the universal time grid. Those 12 areas of dimensional consciousness exist because they were formed by collectives that now inhabit them or uphold them. There is a 13th dimensional energy that is also readily available and being formed. It has to because as you transcend your reality, all beings are affected by the expansion of what you are transcending. But as we look at dimension, you can perceive it as a library of information and your DNA holds that library of information. It is connected to what we have been talking about here in this communication as physicality and non-physicality through the light body. The dimensional energy that you hold is equal to the perception that you have into information. And information is imprinted and holds a weight. Some of it is lighter in form and some of it is denser in form. All density is, is dimensional reality that has been created through frequency or has a physical or non-physical manifestation, meaning experience. Density, in other words, is created through experience. Dimension is created through consciousness. When you are moving through dimensions, what you are able to realize is that your rate of speed becomes so much more heightened that the laws of the universe operate differently for you. In the same way we discussed the the cohesive remembrance of your physicality and your light body coming together. Each dimension offers an opportunity to, for you to become less physical and more integrated with that light body. So for example, many of you may perceive dimensions to be in different locations of physicality. And although there are planetary energies and star systems and star lines, they each hold a different dimension. And it is not about the location, it is about the energy. So within your space here on the planet, each dimension already exists. That form of consciousness is already here. You're only able to perceive the information of that consciousness when you match its resonance speed or frequency. For example, that is how this channel is functioning in the moment to connect with us. Her rate of speed of vibration has matched a frequency allowing us to enter this dimension and allowing the consciousness of this being to access information that is lighter in weight or form than the material that surrounds the planet in this time or where she resides in this time. So as you are transcending your physical experience. You're becoming more non-physical, allowing you more access to information, allowing you to raise your dimension. Now, in saying this, we also want to alert you to the fact that you each have a very unique vibration and dimensional energy in relationship to your DNA. Some of you have come as very evolved, multidimensional beings and have transcended many codes here that have allowed you to operate in perhaps a seventh dimensional strand DNA. What that means is you have a different perception because of the information available to you and you have access that is different than perhaps a third dimensional being would have. However, it becomes difficult for you to hold that dimensional form of consciousness here because you're operating in a density that is precluding you from keeping it congruent. So there are times in which your frequency may match that seventh dimensional access and you may lucidly travel to receive information or you may become aware of something in your environment and perceive it as different than another being. This is why we say that not one of you on the planet could have the same experience, even though you're having a collective connection. Because in that collective experience, all beings are vibrating at different speeds and have different access to awareness and are going to interpret that experience through that perceptive connection to dimension. 
I'm trying to understand DNA in past lives. If, if my DNA from this lifetime can be tracked back multiple generations and those uh, and those an are those my ancestors? And what about, for example, having a past life as someone from World War I times, having specific DNA and ancestors from that incarnation? How does that work? I guess all my relations has new meaning. We are pleased to answer this question. You see, as physical beings, you come very uniquely structured. So you have a carbon-based DNA, which is a physical manifestation of your experience. And you have a crystalline DNA, which is the mirror likeness of that DNA strand in multidimensionality. Because you are more than just physical beings. Your soul is multidimensional. And we know that many of you have a difficult time perceiving this because of the dissertation we just brought in about time and linear time. But your soul is expressing itself beyond this physical body. So when you talk about past, present, and future in the example of past lives, what we wish for you to realize is that that past life is actually taking place in this present moment. It is a part of who you are and your soul is expressing itself in all energies simultaneously. Now, categorization of information must come into this answer because you have within you the structure to categorize information, not just your experiences here in this body, but you're also assimilating based on your frequency as physical beings. So when you look at lineage or heritage of a family unit, for example, we know that you can test your DNA and you can go back in time. You can look at various forms of DNA uh, in terms of race or in terms of disease, for example. You've looked at this very singularly, which is why it appears singularly to you, you see. In all reality, there is some connection to all things. So when you are narrowing your focus to your DNA being just related to a single set of physical beings known as your family, you're perceiving that through a specific dimension, through programs. You're not considering that your makeup must be wider than that. But let's answer this question as you have asked it regarding earthbound physicality. Your crystalline DNA holds all of the information that the, your oversoul or the oversoul knows it to be, knows of your evolution through time, through space, in the multidimensional energies as well as here on the planet. So when you are accessing past life information, that past life information is non-physical and energetic and held in your crystalline DNA. Your carbon-based DNA is the DNA that your planet is most familiar with. This is the DNA that sometimes you consider when you are looking at your medical institutions or these types of records. That DNA is very closely related to your physicality or your physical experience here. And you can see the lineage and the information that is categorized there. So when you think of the library as DNA, think of it having two separate wings. In one wing is your physicality or your physical experience. And the other wing as a crystalline energy becomes your non-physical experience or those timelines that exist that are running as past, present, or future or multidimensional. When you are ascending here, you see, what you are doing is you are illuminating those crystalline strands of DNA and you are integrating them with your carbon-based DNA. That is truly what ascension is about. There are so many fragmented parts of your soul that you're operating within in this focused incarnation you find yourself in in the moment. This is why past lives affect you. Because that energy is there, perhaps of a fear. But that fear is perceived through a very narrow window of time but you don't have the tools 
to integrate all of these things. And this is where many healers have brought their gifts to the world. They have been very focused in that singular energy, bringing that information into your awareness so that you realize how that past life has affected you. And then you can clear it. And in the work that you've done, you've actually manifested a cohesive energy between the crystalline form of DNA and the carbon form of DNA. And you are all at varying levels of this type of healing. But as you go forward, what we see most prominently taking place is that the collective energy within those forms of DNA is what you will be striving for, what you'll be working towards, and what you will be realizing within your physical experience. And, and this is why we say that the physical body, as the Arcturians, we are very focused on your evolution through the physical body as a transition to non-physical, knowing that it will be very difficult for you, knowing the collective nature of the experience that you're having, and the way that the work that you've done thus far is complementing that, how it must continue at a more collective level for healing. Several months after the death of a loved one, I'm having communication with him on a daily basis. Is it possible that this person is trapped in between both dimensions and has not traveled due to having a message or to pass on to others in this astral plane? I bring Jeremiah in to answer this question, so I'm very pleased to have him. We wish to, t to talk about transition as it takes place on your planet, and there are various realms of energy that exist within the field of the Earth and the transitional space in which you are reintegrated into the collective one. The reason for this is within that transition, there has been a process that has been formed through time. When your soul has a physical experience on earth, your transition is different than any other dimensional location that you might be in. The reason for this is it is equal to the way that you have evolved here as beings. We see that the, the form of transition is actually going to be changing as you move into this next phase of reality. But beyond that, we want to answer your question. When a soul is passing on, it is in full awareness of this transitional phase as it is taking place. But you see, the free will of souls is very important to answer this question because where does your free will start and stop in this transitional phase? Free will as physicality is quite different than what we know as an integration of one because as you can imagine, when you are reintegrated with a one, you are going to function as a one through your free will, meaning that every decision you consider, every thought that you have is going to be in some way representative of all beings in that collective. So when you have a soul that you are speaking with that has reemerged here on this earth within that transitional phase, they are still very uh, interconnected with their singular physical free will energy. And through that free will, they're making a choice. Because in this transition that the soul makes, there is a point in time where choices are made, and there's a point in time where the choices become collectively based. When you are speaking or experiencing a soul energy such as this, we want you to remember there are also two ways that that soul energy can show up. In the way that you've discussed it, a soul perhaps being trapped or being in an energy where they need to move on and they are not able to see that reality as a potential, that is a process that does take place. And oftentimes the reason for that is that free will soul becomes so um, vibrationally aligned with a part of their journey that they have not healed, that is very prominent in them, that they wish to interact so greatly with the souls that have been left behind in that timeline that they remain. But beyond that, when you're communicating with a soul from the other side of the coin, we would say, Remember, your soul energy is fragmented. So if your past, present, and future lives are all existing in this experience, in this moment, 
then parts of your soul can be communicating in other forms with other beings. Consciousness is created, if you remember the dissertation that we began with. Consciousness has time, and time has a lingering effect. So souls can fragment into energy, and they can revisit fractals of time in which they had a specific identity, and they can communicate through that identity to beings that are here on the earth. So it does happen in in two different fashions. When that soul is fully integrated with the one, meaning it has moved into the light, as many of you may call it, or it is found source consciousness, it is no longer fractal in the way that it is perceiving its free will and communication. And it is reorganized. It is making a new collective decision. And in that collective decision, there's a time-space lag where that that fragmented soul becomes reunited. And this is why sometimes humans that pass don't communicate for a very long time until they've reintegrated and refragmented into other bodies and other experiences. And this is how many of your ascended masters come back to assist you. They come back through a fractal of time, through a fragmented identity to help you understand a lesson or something that they've learned in their evolution. Yeah. Uh, if you submitted a personal question, then um, I may not be able to read it. We try to keep things universal so we can post it online, but I'll try to reword it if possible. So here's uh, this question was personally focused, but um, maybe you can address in general the question, is there something I'm supposed to be aware of to better work on my path? I get the Lemurian stepping in for this question. We want to talk for a moment about your purpose or your path as it has been interpreted by you. You see, many of you are striving for that one purpose, that one meaning, that one truth that you are. And when you arrive here in physical form, you come with a a vibrational record. That vibrational record is not an outline of every experience that must happen to you in this life. Because if it was, we could not call you creators. If the the record was already decided, there would be nothing to create. What that record holds is a vibrational intention in some way to serve. But It's not about the service or the action of the service so much towards others that is important. It is the service to self that is your key to better understanding the way you are meant to interact with all beings, what that imprint truly is for you in this life. And this is where many of you miss the boat or step outside of the timeline of your truth You see, if you would just explore yourselves more, if you would just allow yourselves more, if you would embellish your creativity in finding what you're most passionate about, within those energies always lies the clue to that intention that you came with. So we make it quite simple. If you are always serving yourself, you're always aligned with that vibrational record. And that is where the information magnetizes into your frequency to allow you to place within your timeline the physical actions or manifestations that allow you to serve. Because service to humanity was never meant to be something that you had to struggle over. It was never meant to be something that was difficult. It was meant to bring you to the fullness of life. It was meant to awaken you to your own humanity. So our best advice to you is to go inward and to nourish the self. Bring your creativity to the forefront. Activate it. Honor yourself. This is not self-serving because it, it brings that record to the forefront. It opens it and allows it to you to allows you to move forward through it in a way 
that is assisting others. What advice can you give to someone who is concerned about the health of his sister? I get Mary Magdalene stepping into this energy. And, and we, wish to, we wish to speak to soul contracts to answer this question because you see, all of you have manifested souls around you in very loving frequencies. These are either children or spouses or parents. And each of them have a very unique meaning to you. And we know the very loving emotions that flow through your experience, the difficulties that you have, the pain that you have in these experiences when another is suffering. What we most realize as ones who have walked an earth experience is that you often use the experience of others as the excuse to take yourself away from source. You feel as if a loved one is suffering that you must suffer as well. And to answer the question about how to truly help one of these souls, we have to always go inward with you. And we know that some of you don't believe that in the healing, in the serving of the self, in the compassion that you have for the self. That is the overflow of love and support into these timelines. When you look at yourself in the mirror, what are you saying? Through experience, what have you told yourself? What is wrong with you? What has society told you is wrong with you? Coming to peace within your own experience sets the vibrational tone for you to be the support for those around you that are experiencing a difficult time. And when we say this, it is not to be in perfection. As a human, you did not come to be in perfection. You came to have an imperfect experience that was in some way evolving your soul. Knowing that you have these soul contracts connecting to that experience, the way to best serve or support them is through your own energy, but to be that full cup that they need. That is the nourishment, that is the hydration that supports them through a difficult time. This question was submitted by email from a viewer from India. Uh, I'd like to, we'd like to speak with Sri Aurobindo, please. I recently watched the new uh, video on your wonderful YouTube channel in that Michaela channeled Krishna as it was channeled here Krishna equal to source in India Lord Sri Krishna is considered an avatar a direct incarnation of the divine planet earth due to the need at that time on planet earth due to the need at that time and almost every town in India has uh, will have his temple. As per Sri Aurobindo's writing, Sri Krishna physically tied himself to Sri Aurobindo and worked with him to bring the supermental light to the material world or earthly life uh, to divinize this planet Earth. First of all, can you tell us who you are? I am a manifestation of a master teacher that comes to your planet and has come in many forms. So when you consider my journey as it has been told, what is most important for you to realize is that I am all beings, I am within all beings, and I have manifested not only here in physicality as human, but also in animal species as well as in nature. Even in the, in the land of India, the land of yoga, where numerous mystics, sages, saints, Rishis and yogis took birth and did quite an amazing, unbelievable work for the evolution of humanity. The work was done, the work done by Sri Aurobindo is something that was not attempted earlier by any of those greats and was considered either an impossibility or they never looked in that direction for several reasons. It would be great to ask a question about what is going on with supermental descent and can you First, explain what supermental descent is and then what is going on with it. The supermental descent being the ascension of the mind and the integration of the omnipresent one. 
this is the uh, unfolding, what we would call, of the source consciousness within. When you are accessing the supermind, it is not a part of human dimension. In other words, you were formed in the likeness of many beings, and those beings lended you their genetics, their various forms of consciousness, and the way that their structures were interpreted. But when you are dealing with something that is not a part of humanity, you must understand that it comes from a higher dimensional source. And what it allows is for the, the harmonization of all of the frequencies of these various uh, energies to come together as one. It is not only a grounding into your earth, but it is a transcendence of the earth plane. The conductors that are enabled through this integration, they take the form of the mind to a higher state of reality. This was a practice that was able to be done in ancient times in order to serve the, the planet and raise the consciousness of the planet as a being. Within this, this supermind experience, there is the integration not only of the oversoul and the higher self, but the interconnection of all beings that is considered in every interaction. When there is a conductor that is integrated such as this, it is a planetary energy or a planetary body that is inhabited here on Earth. The way that you use the planetary energies as, as a signal or as, um, as a radar to various experiences within your structure now becomes uh, higher dimensionally acclimated, in other words. There isn't the need to assimilate your physical experience due to a record that is energetically aligned. You begin to create the record in the way that it is connected to all things through you. You do not have to suffer in the soul body. You do not have to suffer in the physical body. The soul body and the physical body become higher energetic, they become the part of the mind that is able to manifest instantaneously all form. So as the soul becomes integrated with this mind, it actually becomes less fragmented and more cohesive. It begins to accept its transition into the one as a part of its journey or experience simultaneously. In other words, the way that transition is experienced and review is experienced in physical form is no longer necessary because that review is taking place through your physical journey and through your physical life. So there is less need to travel through time and space as a physical being and serve karma. That karma now becomes released in a way that is quite different than is humanly possible. In addition to that, this instant form of manifestation that many of you desire can be achieved because is as the integration of this higher dimensional mind is um, now in place, the physical body is fully connected in a way that it is not able to be in the dimension you resided in. The physical body now takes the shape, it takes the form of whatever you so choose. And the higher dimensional councils or beings that support you on this planet are able to also organize the planetary energies through you. In other words, you become a conduit for information. You become a conduit for healing on the planet. And the way in which instantaneous manifestation takes place in your physical body is the way in which instantaneous manifestation can take place directed at forms of consciousness or the collective. Can you speak to exactly how a soul is created, who can create it, and what a soul is? For example, I've heard that Mother Mary, as a channeled entity, has said that she, she has created souls. Traditional re religions say that only one, that being God, can create souls. The soul energy, and this is the Palladians <laughs> coming back in, they're very pleased to answer this question. The soul energy in itself is, is a creation. And when we speak of a soul energy, we want to 
take this, extrapolate this out to the way in which your planetary body was formed. Because we consider that you are equal to Mother Gaia. And if we help you to understand the way that Gaia was formed, you can understand better the way that a soul is formed. Intention is what forms a soul or what forms a soul energy or a planetary body. And that intention must be collectively based. So you see, there was a calling. There was a collective intention among many, many beings, many planetary energies and galactic star lines. They had evolved their soul through so many turbulent times and had evolved to a point in which there was a need to expand the universe, not because it had to be, because they wished to expand it. And through that singular intention to expand the universe, through that loving intention, Mother Gaia was born as a soul. And through the intention to expand that soul, to inhabit that planet, she grew into what she is today. You see, souls are created through a singular intention held in a very poignant vibrational energy, meaning that the love frequency and the intention is so strong that a manifestation of a soul takes place. So can a collective consciousness, such as the Mary Magdalene energies, create a soul? We would say it happens all of the time because collective forms of consciousness are always expanding through love. And when they are, souls are created, souls are inhabited, souls are making decisions. But when we look at the way that the universe works and your definition of God as creator, we must explain to you that all things coming together as collective consciousness must equal that God. Because if it was not for that frequency, there would be no existence. So the soul energy starts as a singular intention of love, a singular intention of love that is expanded and wishes to experience more of itself. That's why we say if you go deep into the soul energy, you will find nothing but truth because you are always wishing to expand from that energy from the place you resided, which is a love consciousness or love frequency, a one intention of expansion. We also wish to say that many of you consider reproductive activity on your planet between humans as the creation of a soul. And you can see the duality in that conversation, that when two souls come together in one intention, and there is a very prominent and heightened vibration of love frequency, how a soul can be created or a being can be created. This is just the way that it happens in this earth plane. But you see, the more you become less physical, as per the discussion of dimension that we went through previously, you can see how the manifestation or the creation of these soul energies is brought forward. Good to conclude the session, please. Yes, we are the Palladians, and we are pleased to have connected with you as all of the beings that have come forward today. What we wish most for your planet is that you see the connection between your singular experience and the manifestation of your collective reality. You are the healers. You are the ones who are able to transcend time, to transcend consciousness, and to create what you wish to see here. And we wish you many blessings, and so it is. See, and the room always grows. <laughs> I told you. Any questions? Any final questions about anything? Great. Well, it was a pleasure having all of you here today. Thank you. You're welcome. And I hope you'll stay if you're here. Ethan's got a great session coming up.